This is the new 2021 Toyota Sienna, and it's the latest version of Toyota's ultra-popular family minivan. This is the most advanced Sienna yet, with a lot of new family-focused features and technology, and it's only offered with a hybrid four-cylinder engine. And today, I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my new online enthusiast car auction website for modern cool cars. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool car from the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. You'll get the most money and the most views if you're selling, and you will have the best variety of cool and interesting cars if you're buying. Check out Cars and Bids at Cars and bids.com. I'm going to start with a little overview. Now, the Toyota Sienna first came out back in the late 1990s, and at the time, minivans were very different than they are today. Back then, it was just simple family transport. If you were lucky, you had a DVD player in the back. That has all changed. This is the Sienna Platinum, the top-of-the-line version of the new Sienna, with a sticker price of around $50,000 for a minivan. And it has has the luxury features to match its luxury price tag. The features aren't that much of a surprise because minivans have been getting more and more luxurious and adding more equipment for over a decade now. The real surprise here is under the hood. The new Sienna is only offered with a hybrid four-cylinder engine. It's a 2.5-liter hybrid four. It makes about 240 horsepower, but the real standout is fuel economy, 36 miles per gallon in combined city and highway driving. By comparison, the Honda Odyssey gets about 22 miles per gallon in city highway combined, so this is a huge benefit for the new Sienna. It's a big deal. And there are other big changes, too. The styling is an obvious one. Minivans are all trying to get more exciting, more dramatic, and shed their boring family hauler image. There's also a new interior with 18 cup holders, which is insane. And, like I mentioned, there are a lot of new features that you might want in a kid shuttling minivan. And today, I'm going to show you all of it. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of the new Sienna and show you all of the quirks and features of the latest luxury minivan with a $50,000 price tag. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and see how it drives, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the crooks and features of the new Sienna back here, and I'm going to start with an observation. I love reviewing minivans, believe it or not, because I love to see all the crazy innovations they come up with to make parents' and kids' lives a little easier in the car. But in the new Sienna, I've noticed there aren't really any major innovations in here. There are just sort of refinements on other brands' innovations. I'll give you a few examples of what I mean. A few years ago, in the Honda Odyssey minivan, it was a huge deal when they came up with a vacuum cleaner built into the cargo area so you could just vacuum up your kid's stuff without having to go and get an external vacuum cleaner. They called it the Honda Vac. Well, guess what? In the new Sienna, you have the Toyota Vac. No innovation, but there is some refinement. In the Sienna, the vacuum cleaner is not in the cargo area. Instead, it's right here in the second row center console. You press this little vacuum button, and then this little panel is where you attach the vacuum hose. You do that, and you can vacuum out this area. The advantage here is obvious. You can vacuum the second row of seats a lot easier than if it was stuck in the cargo area where it's harder to get to. So this is an improvement over Honda, but it's not Toyota's own new crazy innovation. And there are a few other examples of this too. Honda has a cooled storage box in the Odyssey minivan. They call it the cool box. Toyota has a cooled storage box right here, again, in the rear center console. They call it the fridge box. Again, not an innovation, but there is a refinement. You can see there are two different buttons to control the fridge box. The one on the left has a snowflake and a bottle. That's to turn on just the cooling mechanism. 
but the one on the right has a snowflake and a popsicle, and that's to turn on the actual refrigerator. So it goes beyond a box that just chills your drink or whatever. It is a real refrigerator in here. Again, not an innovation, but a refinement on the cool box from Honda and other brands. And another example, this is cup holders. The Honda Odyssey has 15 cup holders. The new Sienna has 18 cup holders. They had to be just a little bit better in every respect. But it's not just the Honda Odyssey that the new Sienna improved upon. <laughs> you know how in a lot of new SUVs you can stick your foot under the bumper and then the tailgate will open or close? Well, in the new Chrysler Pacifica they have that, but they also have a feature where you can stick your foot under the side of the car and the power door will open or close. Guess what other new minivan just got that feature? That's right, the new Sienna, of course. But probably the best example of Toyota not innovating, but refining something a competitor has done comes under the hood. Now, for years, minivans have used naturally aspirated V6 engines. They all have the Sienna, the Sedona, the Honda Odyssey, all of them, but not this. This is a hybrid four-cylinder, and it is the only powertrain offered in the Sienna. A hybrid four-cylinder minivan, it sounds radical, except Chrysler also offers a hybrid. The new Pacifica offers a plug-in hybrid engine in addition to the gasoline engine. Now, this is different from the Pacifica's hybrid system. You don't plug this in. You just fill it with gas like a normal hybrid. You drive it around, and then the gas-electric hybrid system works together to give you better fuel economy. There are pros and cons to this approach. The benefit of the Pacifica is you can use the electric motor separately from the gasoline engine and go about 30 miles on electric power alone. You can't do that in the Sienna. There is an EV mode, but it's limited to just a couple of miles. But the benefit with the Sienna is no plugging it in, no installing a charger, and it's cheaper than a plug-in hybrid powertrain. And that's a big refinement because the result is you don't plug it in, but you still get 36 miles per gallon in city and highway combined driving. That's almost double what competitors get with their gasoline engines. That is a huge deal. Now you do sacrifice some performance. Only 240 horsepower here. The last Sienna was like 280, 290, but most people will be willing to make that trade-off for the fuel economy. And I suspect all minivan competitors will soon follow the Sienna into hybrid powertrains. But anyway, on to the rest of the quirks and features in the new Sienna. I'm going to start in back because that's probably the place that'll matter to most families with kids who are using the back seat all the time. So let's get back here. The first thing you notice when you get into the back is that the seats, the captain's chairs back here, have three latches on the sides. So maybe wondering what exactly they do. Well, the lower one moves the seat forward or backwards, so you can easily do that from the outside of the car. Then you have a lever, which obviously moves the backrest forward or backward, and it can collapse the seat forward to make third row access as easy as possible. So what does the other latch do? Well, that extends out the leg rest. So if you're sitting in this second row, you can put out the leg rest, recline your seat, and really feel like you're being chauffeured by mom and dad. And next up, we move into the back of the new Sienna, where there are a few notable features back here. For one, you have three different types of power outlets. You have USB-C, you have regular USB, and then if you go down further, you have a traditional household-style outlet so that you can plug in your toaster while you're being driven along. It's nice to have all three options for your kids sitting in the back to charge their devices. Next up, another feature I like back here on the windows, you have sunshades. This will be a welcome feature for parents who have infants that are very sensitive to light. You don't have to stick one of those suction cup sunshades in the window. Instead, you just pull up the built-in sunshade and it does its job. It'd be nice if that was power operated like in some luxury cars, but just having it is pretty cool. And next up, a few less notable but important features back here. For one, this is the top of the line Sienna trim level, the platinum model, very luxurious. So you have two separate climate control zones for the rear seats. You can see one on each side. You can adjust the temperature, the amount of air for each rear seat zone, which is nice. You also have individual heated rear seats back here, so you can turn on your heated seats and sit in even more climate-controlled comfort. And next we move on to the third row, which means I shall climb into the third 
third row. Getting back here is tremendously easy, as it is in a lot of minivans, since they know people will be doing it pretty frequently. You just pull this latch on the side of the second row, the seat folds up, you move it forward, and then you have an enormous amount of space you can use to climb into the third row. Take another look at just how easy that is. It's a very simple process, but with this large space, I simply walk into the third row and sit down. One of the easiest rear seats to access you can imagine, although that's generally true of most minivans. Now, when you're in the third row, nothing particularly exciting back here with two notable exceptions. One is a big one. There is a sunshade for the third row built into the window back here, and it works the same way as the second row sunshade. You just pull on this tab, pull it up, and clip it into place, and you can see it is perfectly sized and shaped to fit this oddly shaped third row window window. That is a really cool feature. Never seen a third row sunshade before, but again, it could be helpful with infants if you have them in the way back. Another interesting feature back here, you have third row power outlets to charge your devices, but only on the passenger side. You can see USB and USB-C. On the driver side of the third row, they don't have that. So if you have third row passengers back here, they're going to be arguing over who gets to charge their devices, and it's going to be a problem when one little kid unplugs another little kid's device and then the screaming begins <laughs> but nonetheless there are some charging ports back here which is better than nothing and next up we move around to the cargo area in the new sienna now you get back here and the first thing you notice is that well frankly it doesn't really look all that nice you have all sorts of plastic pieces and hooks and straps and warning labels back here and it's just not very high quality but there's a reason for that toyota has done this to make maximize the amount of cargo space you get behind the third row. You see these plastic pieces along the bottom? They don't look that nice. Most automakers cover them up. But Toyota has lowered the cargo floor back here to give you as much cargo room as possible with all of the seats in place. And that means this stuff is exposed. They could cover it up, but then you'd have less cargo room. And I suspect most people would rather have the space. And that's a really cool feature. You get a huge cargo area back here, even if you're using all of the seats Seats, you have pretty ample storage space because of this unusually low load floor where you can pack even more cargo in. But let's say you want even more cargo room in the back of the Sienna. You want to put the third row down so you have more space to put stuff. Then that low cargo area load floor I showed you a second ago comes in even more handy. And it's impressive to see how easy it is to fold down the third row in the new Sienna. Check this out. There's a latch back here labeled one. You just pull the latch and then the seat folds into that lower cargo area. One handed, one pull, it's really easy. Do it on the other side, same deal. Pull the latch and the seat is down. Take another look at that. You just pull on the latch and the seat goes down. And now you have a large, vast cargo area back here where you can put pretty much whatever you want. And it's flat because the third row of seats have folded into that lower area I showed you before. It's pretty smart thinking and it's easy to do. And of course, it's also easy to raise the seats back up. Again, you just pull on that number one latch and the seat pretty much goes right back into place. Do it on the other side, same deal. Pull on the latch and the seat goes right back up. Take a look at that again. You can see very easy process takes just seconds and you can do it one handed. And just in case the seat's backrest doesn't go back exactly where you want it, pull on this little loop and you can recline it into place for the perfect third row comfort. And next up, we move on to the front of the new Sienna. Not as important in a minivan as it is in some vehicles because vans are all about the back seats, the cargo area, that sort of thing. But some notable items up here, the most obvious is when you first get inside, you see the center console is like in two levels. You have an upper center console, you can see the gear levers there, and then you have a lower center console below that. I think the reason they do this is to move everything up so it's easily within reach. You can rest your arm on it, you can reach the gear lever, the cup holder is easier, sort of like you're sitting in a sedan. But because you're actually in a van, you have all this room, so there's a space below this, which is large. You can put a bag there, pretty much anything you want. It's a useful little cubby in the front of the Sienna. Next up, a few interesting things in this center console. For one, at the very front, you have a wireless charging pad. Stick your phone on there and it charges. Now, right next to that, you have a cup holder and it has a phone holder in it. So you can charge your phone behind it or you can have it sitting up and sort of facing you right next to that. And then you have your cup holder and then you have another cup holder and then you have this little compartment. Open this and it contains more cup holders. <laughs> 
This vehicle has a lot of cup holders, as I've already mentioned. And next up, another feature I like, also on the ceiling, that would be the rear view mirror. Now, right now, you can see it's a rear view mirror, nothing unusual or special there, but you flip the little switch at the bottom and it turns into a camera. You see how all of the rear headrests and seats went away? That's because now you're looking through a camera's field of vision. The benefit here is obvious. If you have six kids in the back of your Sienna, you don't want to have to look through all of them to see out. Instead, the camera lets you skip all that and just see what's behind you. Some cool features with this camera, it can move left or right, just like a traditional rear view mirror, and you can also move it up or down, same thing. You can also zoom it in or out, which is pretty cool if you want sort of a more focused rear view mirror view, and you can even tilt it if for some reason you want to see the camera display a little tilted. The most interesting thing about this mirror, though, is the fact that it allows you to select a language. <laughs> Folks, we're selecting a language for a rear view mirror. We are certainly living in the future. And next up, staying in the center, we move on to the center screen, the Sienna's infotainment system. And interestingly, this is not the latest Toyota infotainment system that I've shown you in the new Highlander and the new Venza. Those systems have a little bit more responsiveness and some more modern features. This one isn't quite like that. For one thing, it's a little smaller. It's a little less quick to respond, but also it's just more functional. It's less beautiful and well laid out. Some automakers have have very nice, attractive looking systems. This isn't that. It's just designed purely for functionality. They've crammed as much stuff as possible into the screen to make it all work. And it works, but it's just not necessarily attractive in its operation. It's the same deal for the screen in the center of the gauge cluster. This is a small screen and they have crammed a lot of stuff in here. And the result is a lot of acronyms to make things fit in the screen and rather small print, which I think could be a problem for a lot of the people who drive Siennas, it's probably not the best way to do it. And as you can see, there's just so much stuff in this screen, so many menus, so many words. It's probably time to switch Toyotas over to a full screen gauge cluster like a lot of automakers have if you're gonna have that much functionality in the gauge cluster screen. One other cool feature about this screen, if you turn off the Sienna and accidentally leave a window open, it will tell you that a window is open, which is pretty cool. How often do you turn off the car, walk away, see the window, window open, you got to get back in, turn it on, roll it up. This thing lets you know so you don't walk away and forget that your window is open. One other thing I like is this little display at the lower left-hand corner of the piece that contains the infotainment screen. You can see there are all of these arrows pointing in different places. Those are letting you know which seat belts have been buckled. You can see there are two arrows on top because you have two captain's chairs in the back, and then the third row is represented by three arrows since you have three different buckles back there. This is always a helpful feature that allows you to see who who has buckled up without you having to turn around and actually look. And it's nice to have it in such a prominent place in a minivan where it will be relevant frequently. And next up, we move on to the outside of the new Sienna where the styling is definitely a lot more expressive than before. You can definitely see it is bolder. It is more distinctive. I really think they're trying to shed this boring minivan image and get some character lines and excitement on the outside. Whether or not they've succeeded in making it look good, I will leave up to you. But there are a few styling related components that I especially want to cover on the outside. One is this big character line down the side of the van, this big crease. Toyota is adding this to more and more of its vehicles. It's becoming sort of a signature of this generation of Toyota models, and now it's on the Sienna. And the thinking is, I guess, that helps you identify a Toyota from the side, not just from the front when you see the grill and the badge, but this distinctive line on the side lets you know, hey, I'm looking at a Toyota. And by the way, speaking of the grill, take a look at this. It is absolutely massive. And when you look closely, you can see most of it is fake. Ultimately, this is a small hybrid four-cylinder engine. It does not need this much grill. Most of it is blocked off, but it's all there to give the car the look they want. <laughs> this massive wide mouth grill look in front. And by the way, in front, one polar opposite of the grill is the turn signal, which is tremendously tiny. You see the Sienna from the front, you have a very small turn signal and a very large grill. The two things look a little strange when they're next to each other. And one more exterior item worth noting, the wheels. Nothing special with the wheel design, but they're 20s. We have now reached the point where you have 20 inch wheels 
on a minivan. <laughs> His wheels just keep getting bigger. And so those are the quirks and features of the new 2021 Toyota Sienna Platinum. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the new Sienna. And I know a lot of the car enthusiasts who watch my channel are saying, well, why is he doing a minivan? I actually enjoy doing minivan reviews more than almost anything else because they're usually so innovative. They have so many bizarre, weird new features like Honda Vac. My last review, the Honda Odyssey, I was so excited. It. And I was really excited to check out the new Sienna too, but it really hasn't got any crazy innovations like I showed you. There's nothing too unusual. It's just mostly refinements of stuff that other automakers have done. Now that's not necessarily a complaint. It's getting better. It's, it's improved on a lot of the other people's stuff. And I think that that's a pretty common Toyota thing. Wait for other people to invent it. We will refine it. But anyway, on to the driving experience of this car. I, this was delivered to me. The new Sienna is being launched. They're delivering it to all the journalists. And I drove it around for a couple days without realizing that it was a four-cylinder. So that's a pretty good thing. I, I just assumed it was a V6 man. I didn't look up any number. I mean, I don't pay attention when a new minivan is real. I don't go and get into the nitty gritty. But when I did the research to write the script for this video, I looked at it, I'm like, that's a four cylinder? It's not fast. I don't want to make the impression that it's like, feels like a V6. It felt like a slow V6, but it doesn't feel like a four cylinder. It's quick enough. As for the rest of the driving experience in this van, you know, it's kind of interesting. For $50,000, when you get a minivan, what you're primarily getting is features. You're getting all sorts of convenient stuff in the back, technology in the front, but you're not really getting a luxury car like you'd expect from 50 grand from BMW or Audi. And so the ride feels like a Toyota. And in here, there's, there's a lot of road noise, there's a lot of tire noise, not a lot for a Toyota, for a Camry, for a Ford Explorer, cars like that, but a lot for a $50,000 vehicle. But it's just, the money is going to a different thing, basically. Otherwise, it pretty much drives like a normal van. And, and it is a little slower, but I think 99.999% of van drivers are gonna take the trade-off in speed for much better fuel economy. This is probably, I would guess, only maybe a second slower zero to 60 than an Odyssey and it bumps fuel economy from 22 to 36 miles per hour. I mean, it's an unbelievable jump. It's obviously a big win for Toyota and everybody else is gonna be scrambling to catch up. Minivans are clearly going hybrid. This is gonna be the trendsetter in that arena. So overall, my thought on the new Sienna, a little disappointed there's not more quirky innovations in here, although the updates to other people's innovations I think have been executed well. Um, the design is certainly bold and aggressive. I don't think it's ugly or attractive. I think it's just bold. It stands out. Some will hate it and some will like it. Um, the driving experience, it drives pretty much like a van, but the real benefit here is the gas mileage situation and, you know, all the tech, and it just moves the game forward just ever so little bit. And so that's the new Toyota Sienna. The minivan segment is incredibly competitive with Honda and Kia and Chrysler all working really hard against Toyota to create the best minivan, and they all have great vans. This new Sienna has a lot of benefits, technology, interior space, but the real benefit here is fuel efficiency. This is an incredibly efficient van, and that's going to be a big plus for shoppers, and it's really going to help it stand out against the competition, among all of the other benefits benefits of the new Sienna. Anyway, now it's time to give the Sienna a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Sienna is boring, not ugly, but boring. It's a minivan and it gets a 5 out of 10. Acceleration 0 to 60 is probably in the mid to high 7 second range and it gets a 1 out of 10. Handling is slow, boring, not dangerous, but nothing at all special and it gets a 3 out of 10. Fun factor is low, this isn't fun at all, that's not really the point, and it gets a 1 out of 10. Cool factor is also low, again not cool, and it gets a 1 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 11 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The Sienna is well equipped, though not earth shattered and it gets an 8 out of 10. Comfort is normal for a van like this and it gets a 6 out of 10. Quality is good, the interior is fine, not particularly amazing, but of course I expect reliability to be excellent and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is tremendous and it gets a 10 out of 10. And in fact, I'm dropping down most rivals to just a 9 because this van has set a new standard for practicality with its amazing people moving capabilities and fuel economy. Finally, value, and the Sienna is nice, lots of good stuff, but priced well into luxury car territory. It gets an 8 out of 10 for a total daily 
Ridley score of 39 out of 50. Added up and the Doug score is 50 out of 100, which places the new Sienna here against rivals. The weekend score is truly dismal, as you'd expect from a minivan, but the daily score is huge, better than nearly all rivals. With that said, the new Sienna only beats out the Honda Odyssey by one point, which isn't a big win for a brand new model. The Sienna just doesn't move the game forward that much, except for fuel economy, which I admit is a big deal to many shoppers, and that alone is probably why I would pick the Sienna. And next up, we move on to the cargo area in the new Sienna, which is rather interesting. When you first... <laughs> 